This is Wagner Live. Is Wagner Live. If it's going on in business, he's talking about it. Real, Real raw, raw, and direct. Let's do it. This is Wagner, Wagner Live. And this is Wagner Dos Santos. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. I'm your host, Wagner Dos Santos, and this is Wagner Live Insights. Today, we have a special show. We're gonna discuss the importance of defining who you are, not who you aren't. And now, that applies to brands, both company, personal. And uh, certainly, I'm going to be uh, bringing this insight to you for company brands, but it also does relate to personal branding. So um, let me go on and and get started here. But first, um, this month in January, I'm gonna try to gear the insights so that they are, um, they're useful for your 2017 planning because January is a a big planning month. Now, some people are, very, uh, very good planners and very proactive planners. And they've made their 2017 plans, uh, around the last quarter of the previous year of 2016. But studies have shown that not everybody, um, either has been able to plan that early or normally wants to plan that early or for whatever reason, just can't do it. So many do, uh, end up rushing to, to plan the year in January. So wherever you are in that planning spectrum, um, I'm going to be providing some insight, uh, every day in the month of January, uh, or every weekday rather in the month of January that will be related to, um, areas that you should include in your planning. So today, as I said, we're going to be talking about how to define who you are, not who you aren't. And I want to refer, as I as I often do, to an article that um, I read that was uh, put out not too long ago. In fact, it was a blog post by a company called Marketo. And for those of you that are watching the replay or will visit my website later, I'll put the link up to the original article so that you can, or the original blog post so that you can read that. Um, but they go through three um, three top areas which uh, uh, which I liked, and so for the basis of this program, I'm going to use that uh, to uh, to continue. Um, so very number number one, uh, number one is you don't want to be a body outline at a crime scene. Um, so I, I think this is, uh, uh, this is pretty funny, but um, essentially um, they go on to say that uh, by its very definition, a brand must be something um, and, uh, and that it, um, it, it should include a, a brand is the essence of one's um, own unique story and this is true for personal branding as it is for business branding. Uh, the key, though, is reaching down and pulling out the authentic, unique, quote unquote, you. Otherwise, your brand will just be a facade. Um, it's it, People talk about branding all the time and sometimes uh, sometimes it's not very well explained, I think. And people don't really understand the value to put into a brand. They understand the value uh, to some extent of advertising your products and services, your features and benefits to get someone to purchase. But sometimes they don't understand the branding that comes before that because they don't see how that directly correlates to a return on investment. Um, Branding is extremely important and there are individuals and companies that dedicate their career just to branding and for very good reason because um, even if you don't realize it consciously, um, your subconscious is connected to certain brands and you gravitate to either purchase or associate yourself with that brand uh, as a loyal customer or as a regular customer because that brand identity means something to you. And so in order for that brand to communicate its identity in a way that is relevant and compelling to you, 
there's branding work involved that goes on to make that happen. It just doesn't happen um, mysteriously or um, or or without any kind of planning. Although, you know, sometimes some rare situations occur, but for the most part, it goes with a lot of planning. So defining your brand has a lot to do with um, first understanding your customer base and your audience for the brand and then being able to uh, shape it in a way that is relevant and connects to them. And again, that, that could be for business, that could be for your own personal brand, right? And it's, sometimes it's easier for people to understand personal branding because we're all people, right? And so we understand how we connect with one another and we we think about, okay, the friendships I've made, the um, business networks that I've created, um, I know when it's worked and I know when it hasn't worked. When it's worked is when I have been more empathetic and I have um, really um, been on my game, quote unquote, and I, I, I'm, I'm really sociable and all those things. So when you think about that, um, those, kind of, those kind of elements apply to a business brand that you need to be able to uh, communicate in a way that is uh, sociable and um, and uh, you're you're um, connecting with people in a way that you're empathetic. So all those same same things apply. So number two um, is if you don't fill in the blanks, someone else will. I like this a lot because. Um, you hear a lot of talk about brand storytelling. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you something. All right, not to sidetrack here, but I do sometimes. Um, people that know me or and, and have listened to me, they know that sometimes I'm so sick and tired of hearing a lot of the buzzwords that are out there, including content. I love producing content, I, but I hate the word content. And uh, and you keep hearing all the time people saying content, content, I'm making content, content. And it's it's gotten to a point that it's become so sterile that it's taken the personality out of uh, out of, of out of what someone is producing. And um, and so my tangent here on that is that we focus a lot on what we want to produce and we don't focus on what others are interested in. And, uh, and really, um, brand storytelling is one of those. Uh, a lot of people talk about, oh, I'm going to create this brand story. Um, and they're creating a kind of in a vacuum without thinking about the audience that's going to be receiving that brand story. And is it, is it a story that, that is compelling to them that they're going to receive? Is it, um, does it mean something to them or does it only mean something to you? And, and so with this number two, um, the second point from Marketo, which is if you don't fill in the blank, someone else will. Um, I would say that nine out of 10 times, your audience is filling in those blanks. And so, yes, you, I would say that you want a balance of creating that story because you, you need to know who you are and who you want to be, because that means something. You don't just want to completely cater to your audience and just be whatever they want you to be, because that would be insincere and not authentic. So you do want to dive into who you are, but you um, you do want to allow some latitude for your audience to create the story. So um, I would say that the audience really does shape a brand story. Who a brand becomes um, starts with the brand, with the foundation, but it evolves um, through uh, through the audience. And it's and I think I, I would associate it. I would associate it with art. You know, there are uh, you go into gallery and there are multiple appreciations and interpretations of art. And, um, and the art itself takes on a, a greater life based on the interpretations of the, uh, uh, those that appreciate it. So brands have a little bit of that too. So you, brands want to steer some of that conversation so that it doesn't go off brand or off message and, and it stays true to who they, who they want to be, but you do need to 
not be so stiff with uh, those of you that uh, are listening to the podcast and aren't seeing my um, my gestures. I'm I'm kind of showing uh, with my hands how to kind of steer. Uh, steer a ship or <laughs> something. I'm steering something. I don't know what I'm steering. But what I'm saying is you want to steer a path, but you want to also be loose and not rigid so that um, people can can uh, can make uh, or create a story, help develop that story into something that's relevant to them. Um, number three. Number three is people remember your company based on their perspectives. And that's uh, that's super important in that how they'll remember uh, your company is going to be based on what they see and what their experiences are. So no matter the story that you create and that you craft and that you write and that you put into your commercials and you have your staff say what comes out in the wash, if you will, is what people are going to see and perceive. So if um, if you say some great things, but you don't deliver and you provide a very uh, horrible um, retail experience or a, um, or, or maybe not as such a, um, uh, not such a, a, a positive customer service experience. Uh, people are going to remember that no matter how great your story is, if you're not, if you're not delivering on all cylinders, they're going to remember that. So you want to make sure that with your brand and again, whether it's a business or whether it's a personal brand, um, how are you delivering that to the fullest extent from the storytelling to um, the tools that you're providing your audience to take that story and amplify it and evolve it to the delivery of, uh, of your services? And, you know, I, I, I've been talking about both personal and business brand from a personal perspective. That would mean um, be, you know, uh, be who you say you are, right? So if you make a promise, deliver on that promise. If you say you're going to do something, you do it. Um, don't exaggerate. So those those are, are uh, brand killers. When you don't deliver on those areas, you exaggerate and you, uh, you say what you don't mean. Same thing goes for business. If you make all these great promises, but then you don't deliver in the end, you're a restaurant, let's say, for example, you show beautiful pictures of the food and the service. Then you go into the restaurant. It looks nothing like the pictures and the service is horrible. That's what they're going to remember. That's their, that's going to be their brand perspective and the story that they're going to tell others. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Um, my closing is that when you, um, you do your planning for this year, whether it's for business or whether for your own self for person, uh, personal branding, um, think about these things that I talked about. Like I said, I'm going to put this on my website and you'll be able to uh, go to the link and read the blog post in its entirety uh, from Marketo. And it was only um, uh, published, um, I think it was published on the 30th of December. So it's still pretty fresh. And when you're, when you're planning branding this year, remember, remember that you want to be authentic. You want to be compelling. You want to uh, leave a little latitude for people to develop the brand into what's, um, what's important to them. And you don't want to be so rigid in the definition of your brand that it uh, isn't left for some kind of interpretation, but you want to direct the interpretation so it doesn't go, uh, it doesn't go south fast. And, um, you know, your personal brand, and we'll talk about personal branding more on another episode because it's a really big topic and I'm a big proponent of personal branding. Uh, I'll give you a taste by saying that I believe that no matter what you do in life, no matter where you work, whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you're an employee, personal branding is so important. And uh, it is at the core of how you market yourself as an employee, as an entrepreneur, all those things. So if you think that personal branding is not important to you because um, you are just an employee or because you believe your company is more important than you, you're mistaken. So I will definitely talk about that further in another episode because it's so important. And I would say make sure that your planning for this year includes branding of some sort and attention to branding because everything that follows your products, your services, your deliverables will all benefit from the attention to branding. 
So that's our show for today. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will be back tomorrow morning broadcasting live only on Periscope at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And as always, send me your feedback, communicate with the show, and receive replays all on my website. Did I say all on my website? All on my website. <laughs> all on my website, which is Wagner.live. Until next time, this is Wagner. You've, You've been, been listening, listening to, to Wagner, Wagner Live. Live. Wagner is an advertising agency executive, and it's his passion to talk about business without the fluff and blowing smoke. Having owned and operated several different businesses since the age of 17, and with 20 years of experience in advertising and marketing, he may be just a tad bit qualified. We hope you enjoyed the show. Catch him on social media at Wagner Live and hit the website at Wagner.live. We'll see you again next week.